Welcome back to Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Um, I took a break from that last mission, you guys, because that was that one was kind of heavy. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I hope it wasn't too heavy for you guys. But the cool thing about this game is it definitely has its snarky, uh, more humorous writing, but it also has its serious parts as well, and that's, that's very much like the book. Um, now we're going to be doing Joe's mission here. We'll learn more about that in just a few minutes. Um, I don't remember much about this mission. It's not one of my favorites. I don't hate it, like I hated the alien mission, which I'm sure I sounded grumpy throughout the entire thing, but I don't remember much about this one. When I go back and replay Callahan's, I spend the most time doing Josie's mission and um, Alfie's mission, because those are my favorite ones. So we're just going to have to wing this, and hopefully I won't screw up. So let's, uh, lo let's look at him. Joe, Ralph Von Wawa's best friend and business partner, is looking horribly upset. Von Wawa? I don't remember that. Joe scribbles a quick hiya, Jake, on his pad and flashes at flashes it at you. You often feel bad for having to having Joe write so much. He has a great many speaking friends, but almost none of them know Omslin or American Sign Language. While you do know the alphabet and a few dozen signs, you don't nearly know enough to follow Joe when he's conversing with other signers, and you can tell he dislikes having to sign as slowly as you need him to. But sometimes when you see him, the two of you practice, but he's clearly far too anxious to take the time right now. Uh, let's see. Let me get you a drink. Joe holds up one hand and puts the other on his stomach. You recognize this as the worldwide idiom for, I'm sloshing already. Oh, he's already tanked. Good. Less work for me. Calm down, bud. What's the problem? I probably should have asked him that first. Uh, Ralph's been kidnapped. Are you serious? Joe nods his head energetically. They took him to the Catskills. Ah, uh, the Catskills. The Catskills. Uh... You mean they forced him to go on vacation? <laughs> Aw, he grimaces at you and rolls his eyes. Dead serious. Government, probably. Follow them to south edge of Catskill Mountains. Who's they? Who's they? Four guys took him took him were suits, but I think the MPs at Mount, at Mountain Facility. Oh, I think I saw MPs. Reading! Didn't Reading they is identify themselves or say anything when they took him? Told people told people at pet shop they were CIA. Were they arresting him? No, probably didn't think they needed to read rights to a dog. Didn't volunteer any info. So basically, Ralph's dog got kidnapped by the government. Completely believable. Well, you were right about the trained cockroaches and the CIA, so I have to believe you now. Jake, how about it? Guess I'm just I'm a guy just who a girl can't say who no. Can't say no. I'm in a terrible fix. Oh, be sure. Oh. What, what the hell? hell? I've been running around the world getting people angry at me. Really, if I should be fighting with anybody, it's the government. Great, let's go. I better let people know where we're going in case we don't come back. Meet me outside. Joe looks panic-stricken at your delay, but hangs back to wait for you to leave. Seriously, we've helped people uh, get rid of psychic abilities. We went to Brazil to make chocolate. We time-traveled. Seriously, Rec rescuing a dog should be no problem whatsoever. I wonder if this guy has anything to say to me yet. He hasn't talked to me all night. When you try to talk to this man, he casts his eyes downward as if to indicate that he'd rather not talk. You have no idea what his story is, but you may learn it eventually. Most people who find Cal hands open up after a while. Let's talk to Snooty McSnooterson. Almost all the regulars are here. Um, pff, stock answer. Can I talk to this woman? Stock. Can we talk to... The, uh, no. Ah, uh, poop. I wish we could talk to all these people. I like that there's a description for everything, but I wish we could talk to everybody, too. Okay. Joe walks ahead of you as the two of you step out into the parking lot. I'm gonna save my game! Uh, what do we have to do? Which car is yours? Should we take my truck? Probably not. Stores! Oops. Talk to. Joe scribbles a question mark on the pad, his informal shorthand for what's up. 
Sometimes, in his haste to put down the words in his head, he skips the punctuation. And other times, he skips the words and just uses punctuation. Or, let me get you a drink. Jake, we're not even in the bar anymore. Forgot what I was gonna... Uh, okay. Never mind. Just kidding. I don't know which car is Joe's. What is this? A police car? That's maybe Josie's car. Oh, I hope it's the Bel Air. Let's drive it. Oh, it's fast Eddie's. Even if Eddie were to let you drive it, which you doubt, you'd be terrified that you ding it or get a squashed bug on the windshield or something. Callahan drives a station wagon? Aww, he owns the place. He should be driving the Bel Air. Nope, the Roadster is not mine. Maybe it's the Explorer. Hey, you're on Earth, man. You want a truck, not one of these wussy sport utility vehicles. See, you can be macho when you really need to be. Arrgh. That probably didn't sound very macho coming from me. Maybe the Jeep. Whoops. Oh yeah, here it is. Joe's Wrangler has a peculiar, peculiar, peculiar odor. A mixture of German Shepherd and Old Spice. Mmm, om nom nom. Joe shakes his head and points to your car. Apparently you know he the wants way you to there, drive. I don't. Fine, waste my gas. Drive. You jump into your truck, lean over, unlock the passenger side. Joe climbs in after you and navigates, pointing most of the time, but jotting down things when necessary. You take the Northern State Parkway west, the Throgs Neck Bridge to the mainland, and then 687 north to Catskill Mountains. I wonder if that's a real place. I'll have to look that up later. Just like the other things I said I would look up and never did. Oh, cute. Ah, his little doggy feet. You see, it's cute because it has to do with the mission we're on. Get it? Because we're rescuing the dog. Yeah, never mind. Where are we going? Good God! I didn't know we were, like, gonna be in the middle of nowhere. About two hours after leaving Callahan's, Joe directs you to pull over by the side of the road. I guess we're here. It looks like we're on frickin' Mars. Look at the sky. It's, like, red. Uh, save. Catskill Mountains. I know, I don't remember hardly anything about this, about this mission, but I will see what I can do. First things first, let's climb the fence. You reach out to the fence. Your fingers get closer and closer, but you can't quite reach, you can't quite bring yourself to actually touch it. What, with the high voltage sign and maybe being burnt to a crisp and all? Baby. Uh, let's take our own knapsack. Let's look at it. Oh, it's Joe's knapsack, but I'm gonna take it. It's mine now. You hustle back to the truck and pick up the knapsack. Alright, what's in this baby? You open the knapsack and rummage through its contents. Ooh boy, all kinds of neat stuff. We just got a grappling hook. Uh, goggles. They look like, uh... Oh, what's that game? You know, that game with the guy who wears the goggles. Yeah, oh, it'll come to me. Look at the suction cups. These are four strong, quickly suction cups with straps. That may be some sort of emergency snake bite kit. And a pocket knife. And, oh, wire cutters. Ah, uh, perfect. Well, no, I can't cut the... I can't cut the fence. I'll get electrocuted. What am I thinking? Um, uh, here's... And here's, like, the perfect place to cut the wires. Well, let's try anyway. Oh, oops. I accidentally clicked the scaffold. Uh... No, 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 no. Okay, cut wire cutters on the entrance. You can't cut the wire cutters on the entrance. I want the fence. There. Cut the fence with the wire cutters. You bring the wire cutters close to the fence and stop. Uncertain, you draw back and toss the wire cutter at the fence. It sparks wildly for a moment and falls to the ground. You pick it up. It's hot in a couple of spots, but you have heave a sigh of relief. So, did you guys know if you could pee, if you pee on an electric fence, it really does, like, kill you? I don't know, there's, there's speculation, because on Mythbusters, they said that if you pee on an electric fence, it doesn't. But on A Thousand Ways to Die, it says if you do pee on the electric fence, the stream gets electrocuted. Isn't that fascinating? Didn't everyone want to hear that? You should try to get the guard out of the guardhouse if you want to go inside. Can I use my pipe wrench finally? Nope. That pipe wrench will have a use. I will be able to knock somebody over the head with it eventually. Let's talk to Joe. What's up? Now's a good time to pull out that big old plan you were working on for this. Maybe I can distract the guard. You can check out the guardhouse. And then? See if the fence is on. 
See if there's a way to turn the security off without being obvious. Okay, how are you going to distract the guard? Joe pulls a camera out of his pocket and winks at you. Then he starts off toward the guardhouse, stops, and comes back to your position. Did you forget something? Joe reaches into his pocket a second time and pulls out his keys. On the key ring is a small, slender, silver whistle. He twists it off his keychain and presses it into your hand. This? What is this? Ralph gave it to me. His whistle, just in case. Shouldn't you keep it? But Joe, had already, Joe has already gotten back to his feet and walks to the guardhouse. He walks near the guardhouse and begins to snap flash pictures. The guard immediately walks out of the guardhouse and approaches Joe, who backs away, taking the guard further and further from the booth. Finally, he stops backing away. He probably has the guard a sufficient distance from the guardhouse for you to sneak in and out if you're cautious. Alright, so now's the time to be doing stuff. So I hope I don't mess this up. Okay, they're conversing. I'll save my game first, just in case I mess up. It's very hard to mess up in this game, but just in case. So I'm going to go towards it. Once inside, you stay low to the ground, trying to keep your head at or below window level. The equipment is antique high-tech, not having been updated since the late 70s, when it went from poorly designed bomb shelter to an ineffectively redesigned research storage facility. Hey, somebody's lunch. Take. You think about food at the oddest times. What are you trying to say, game? I'm starving. Neither the bag nor its contents will be of use to you. Open. You open the bag and your face is suddenly enveloped in steamy cloud infused with the essence of gyros and fries. Mmm, gyros. If some entrepreneur would only invent a woman's perfume with that particular aroma, there would be many women who hus whose husbands would take them to bed more often. Noted. I will spread a gyro all over my body and smell good. You gently reclose the bad bag and fold the top over the approximate angle when, it was when you began. <sighs> Reading. The guard might be really, really anal. Look at. Ew. Okay, now see here. Um, whoops, that's not what I- Jake! Why would you leave? I just got in there. Go back. Okay. Ah, pencil. Take. Your pencil is far superior in every way, except your sticks out of the pocket more. Of course, that would be an advantage, but probably not. That's right, I've got a Faxon Costa Rico thing. It's a Faxon Castoroga 42G, the repels them. Its fiberglass shaft and real lead core make it one of the most durable and toxic pencils ever made. That's right, I don't need that pencil. I got this pencil. Let's see, there's wires here. Let's look in the wastebasket. You pick through the garbage and find an ocal, an old local, ocal? An, <laughs> an old local paper, damp with something. There's also some candy wrappers and a catalog for mail order computer goods threatening to take the addressee, Mr. Weather Government Facility, off the mailing list if he doesn't place an order soon. Chair. I'm just kind of looking around. Um, let's read the letter on the board. Dear Mount Weather Personnel, We at the Department of Defense would like to thank you for your patience during the completion of the renovations to the Mountain Weather. We have heard your complaints and succeeded in arranging the appropriate funding thanks to no small part to Senator Bob N. Verporkbelly. Any contributions to the Senator's campaign fund will be matched by the Department of Defense, so please return your envelopes at the end of the month and give generously. So far, we have completed work on the air conditioning, which now reaches all rooms of the facility. We also emptied the refrigerator. Our thanks to the boys at Hazmat and brought the new vending machines that give change. Duh, that's so long! <laughs> I don't have patience for that. Now, um, I'm going to save my game because I'm sure I have to do something with the control panel. And I suck at anything that has to do with wires, control panels, or any kind of related related uh, uh, puzzles. There we go. <laughs> I'm also bad at saying the word puzzle. So let's remove... something is preventing... oh, it's probably this thing. Let's see. The button is locked behind the plexiglass bubble. Hmm. The guard carries a key for this. Maybe I can use my utility knife. Joe cheaped out and got the model without the lockpick. I don't really... I don't ha I don't think I have a lockpick. I have a pencil. I have a whistle. Where's that tire iron? <laughs> Aw, that didn't work. Oh. What can I use as a lockpick? Maybe I can use the pencil. See, this is why you're always losing pencils. If you don't want to carry it, stick it behind your ear and pull your hair over it.